Despite increased awareness, the white shark continues to be one of the most feared and misunderstood animals in all of nature. So I headed to South Africa to learn as much about this shark's behavior as possible from those who deal with the shark on a daily basis. After spending a good deal of time with these amazing animals, one begins to realize that they are not mindless killers, but rather behave in unique and individual manners. For instance, the attitude displayed by each shark in regard to the cage, bait, and boat seems to be quite different for each animal. It's not uncommon to spend a large part of the day just trying to get one of these mysterious animals to come close to the boat, despite deploying a large amount of chum, bait, and even seal-shaped decoys into the water. And when a shark does arrive on the scene, its behavior is quite the opposite of that of a mindless killer biting everything in its path. Many of the sharks stay at a safe distance, slowly circling the boat not interested in the bait, but still drawn to the boat out of curiosity. Sadly, this naturally inquisitive behavior makes these sharks an easy target for poachers and trophy hunters. Some of the sharks will gently investigate the bait and seal decoy, yet never actually take a bite. After losing interest, they quickly move on. Other sharks will make one half-hearted attempt at the bait before deciding they aren't interested. And still other sharks will completely ignore the bait and rather take a good close look at the strange animals inside the cage looking back out at him. Other behaviors often observed are sharks that pretend as though they're not interested in the bait, then cut back in a sneaky manner. Sometimes the shark will try only once. Other times it will cut back two, three, even four times in an effort to get the bait. Other sharks use the straightforward approach and attack the bait with a sudden burst of speed. Other times the shark will attack straight from below with a sudden vertical burst of speed. This is called the ambush approach. And when a determined shark decides it really wants the bait, that's when the real show begins. This requires a large energy expenditure on the shark's part, so it's a large investment calorically. But it also seems to yield the best results. The surface breaches that occur as a result of these types of attacks give one a small insight into what it must be like to see a seal that has been attacked while swimming on the surface. Chris Fallows has made famous these types of attacks by taking film crews and tourists out to False Bay off the coast of Simonstown, South Africa. Although impossible to predict when this type of attack will take place, it definitely happens here more often than anywhere else on Earth. On board Chris's boat, heading out to Seal Island, he was kind enough to share with me some of his favorite photographic moments. 10 years ago, so we're sitting here on a beautiful day like this. We watched four seals coming back, just bobbing and weaving, in crystal clear water. And when they're about five to 10 meters away from the boat, you saw a white shark come blasting up through them, catch one basically as it left the water, and kill it right next to the boat and consume it. It was quite incredible. I've seen four meter white sharks where if I jumped as high as I could, I couldn't touch the, the lowest part of the shark out of the water. Uh, I guess the one photo I've got where the shark's blasting, belly up, lovely light with the mouth open, and then cartwheeling, that was incredible. I've been lucky and I've seen hundreds and hundreds of breaches, so they've 
it's hard to pick a couple of the very best, but the most amazing thing I ever saw was undoubtedly when we watched at least 28 different white sharks feed on a bridesmaid carcass for a period of 18 hours. And they were overlapping, pectoral fins touching, feeding right next to each other, just huge sharks, four and a half, some of them even bigger, you know, massive, massive animals. And just the interactions and just so many white sharks together, it's really something that's never been witnessed before in that volume. So that was, I guess, a, a highlight that'll be very difficult to beat. Perhaps the most mysterious and bizarre behavior displayed by these sharks is a phenomenon referred to as the nose up. Brilliant. Oh, beautiful shark. Beautiful shark. Of course, this doesn't take place with just any great white. The shark has to meet certain criteria. Usually the shark is something that the people call a player, or one that engages in spy hopping. What is spy hopping? Spy hopping is when the shark slowly swims by, lifting his head slightly above the water and seems to take a look around, showing great curiosity in his surroundings. Occasionally, a shark can be seen lifting his head above the surface for no apparent reason. Was he investigating something on the surface? Or did he just feel like taking a look around? Grant Tuckett left his job as an emergency paramedic to spend more time with the great white shark. He now works as a skipper on an ecotourism boat, which helps people realize their dream of seeing a great white shark. Having spent the last five years of his life seeing great white sharks on a nearly daily basis, Grant has had his share of nose-up experiences. In an effort to gain more understanding on the concept of a nose-up, I sat down with Grant and asked him all that he knows. Well, the theory behind the mouthing objects in the water and mouthing the boat is uh, inquisitiveness. Uh, they've got very good taste buds. They want to know what it is. There's bait and chum in the water. They're trying to work out where that's all coming from. Um, and it's normally something down from the actual boat. It's very, very rare that they'll mail the actual boat, particularly the large boats we work on. It's normally a smaller object like the cage. Uh, they pick up all the activity from the cage, electrical impulses from uh, the metal objects in the water. Uh, you've got fish finders in the water that give off a signal. They'll come and mouth close to that. The propellers hanging down in the water. And also chum, chum hands in the water. If they get hold of the chum bag and the chum bag doesn't come away, they can thrash their head from side to side and they're banging on a metal object. And you, you want them to stay away from anything sharp. There are competing theories that the shark only behaves this way because it's confused or that it's trying to bite the hand or that it thinks that there's food and can't see what's going on because the eyes are on either side of the head. While these are reasonable theories, Grant feels like something else is going on, especially in the case of a very special shark. But on that particular day with this particular shark, it was a three and a half meter male, and it was around the boat for at least an hour with around our boat. And I got the impression that the way it was interacting at the back of the boat, the way it was ignoring the bait, ignoring the cage, um, I'd do a nose up, it would come back to the dive platform where there was no other target around. It wasn't trying to, to mouth the dive platform. It was coming straight towards me from either angle, putting its snout right out of the water, almost like it's looking at me. And I got the impression the shark was actually coming back for me to do that same nose up again. I probably did at least eight nose ups on that particular shark and probably pushed it on its side about three times at least. Then it's almost like it's, it's coming back to you. That's the impression you get. Whether it is or not, I don't know, but that's just the impression you get. This type of behavior forces one to wonder exactly what is going on in the shark's mind. We may not be ready to believe that these are highly intelligent animals or that they have personalities, but one thing is for certain. It's getting harder and harder to classify this as a mindless killing machine. <laughs>